Uh, I'm really happy to introduce Carson Slabot today, one of our colleagues here in Aeronautics and Astronautics. Carson's been at Purdue for quite a while. He did his PhD here uh, with our, our colleagues over mechanical engineering, then joined Zucco Labs as a senior research engineer. And we brought him on board in Aeronautics and Astronautics in 2015, and obviously was successfully promoted to associate professor. Uh, Carson, I'm glad you put your little quote up there on the, on the slide, from the laboratory to the engine. When I talk about what the work Carson does, he really does look at combustion issues from fairly fundamental things that are laboratory scale, all the way up to test rigs that are at or very close to actual operating conditions for the kinds of engines that he works on. He does high bandwidth, high fidelity diagnostics for engine combustion. He's done work in conventional combustion devices for both gas turbines and ramjets. He's been doing work lately with some colleagues on rotating detonation engines and looking at some of those additional advanced concepts that might enable supersonic and hypersonic air breathing propulsion and even tying into rocket propulsion. In addition to all the work that Carson does out at Zucro, he's quite active teaching in the school. He's taught our undergraduate aerospace propulsion course, both air breathing and rocket propulsion. He's done a great job with our design build test propulsion course. He's also taught uh, collaborating with his colleague in mechanical engineering, uh, basically traded off our distance course in air breathing propulsion. So he's got a good footprint in our teaching endeavors as well. Carson, I'm not sure if you're gonna talk about the uh, Burning Man competition or the Burning Man truck you did, but it's also sort of a neat thing that Carson has done. So with that, let me, let me get it, give, give Carson the stage so we can get close to back on time and you have time to present. We get time to do questions and answers. So Carson, again, congratulations on your promotion. I'm looking forward to your talk. Thanks a lot, Bill, for the introduction. Um, I'm glad that I get to go first while everyone's expectations are still really low for this. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this goes well. I'm going to kind of start from the beginning. Um, this, this really, uh, um, uh, for me, began um, back at a very er early age. And, um, you know, I, I'm just very fortunate to be in a position now where I, I can work in a career that uh, basically is, is what I would do for fun anyways. So like I said, you know, I, I, how did I get here? Um, I was actually kind of born and raised in, in rural Florida. Uh, I had a very close family and a dad that was a bit of a gearhead. Uh, and so early on, he recognized that, uh, that I, I might also like the same sort of mechanical things he did. And uh, really, he channeled my interests into that direction uh, from a very early age. Um, so even from here as a kid, um, I got into, uh, into motorsports. Um, at, at actually at 10 years old, I, I was uh, on a drag strip and, and racing, um, doing, I, I would say, the, the earliest stages of my data analysis and data acquisition, um, building those skills even from, from high school age, uh, built, the, uh, built my first car. Um, it had to end up on a drag strip too before it was over. Um, and then even into um, some, some higher level racing before I got into uh, um, my, my formal education and working on my, my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. My goal back then was actually just to join a, a racing team. That's, that's what I really wanted to do. Um, but then through an internship at, at Lockheed Martin, um, I, I realized that, that I probably wanted to, to change that goal. And that set me on a path towards aerospace engineering and graduate school and so forth. So as, as Bill mentioned, I, I came here to Purdue in 2010 for my PhD in mechanical engineering and um, was able to then join the faculty in, in 2015. And so that's the focus of the rest of this talk. So the, the high level overview of what we do in my group is we, we use high bandwidth optical diagnostics to probe the um, probe the physics of interaction between fluid mechanics and chemistry, which are effectively the rate controlling processes in combustion. We, um, it really, for me, um, I, like I said, you know, I, I'm an engineer at heart. I'm interested in a lot of uh, complex engineering problems, particularly in propulsion. Uh, I really just like things that go fast, as you can kind of see that that was um, sort of raised and, and brought into me from a very early age. And so whether it's a gas turbine or a rocket engine or a ramjet or a scramjet or anything else, uh, we pretty much take the same approach to the problem. We will build an experiment in our laboratory, which suitably replicates the, the flow conditions in a gas turbine or a rocket. We shoot lasers at that flame um, through windows or even just in the, in the plume. And then from the interaction of that light 
with the matter that is within the flow, we can measure things that we need to know, like temperature or pressure or velocity or what chemical species are there. And then that's where the math comes in. Once we have those signals or images or whatever it is, um, we, we analyze that and we learn things about where fuel, for example, is, is going within the combustor at different throttle positions or how um, different processes interact within combustors, like having large scale turbulent structures, which are sensitive to acoustics and other noise generated within the combustor and how that can impact the flame and drive instabilities and so forth. This is an example in the top right of one of these things where we, we have made measurements at high enough rates so that we can actually volumetrically reconstruct the large scale flow structures within a gas turbine flame at operating conditions, which, um, which are representative of when that, that burner is keeping you up in the air on your, on your plane. All this is enabled by, by Zucor Laboratories. It, it starts, and uh, I would say it starts and ends, but really it continues at this point, thankfully, because I got tenure, so it doesn't end yet. Um, it starts and continues with Zucor Laboratories. Um, this is sort of my, my, um, my home away from home in the sense that, you know, we just, I've been working out here for many years, and it's a very special place for me. When I, when I started as a graduate student, actually, um, I, I took this picture of, of this Purdue propulsion. I was very proud to be at Purdue. Um, and so I, I thought it was actually quite fitting uh, that I, as I was building this, this talk up, um, I actually had another picture of that same logo, which was taken about two months after I started as a professor here. And this was actually the rest of the office space that I was sitting in. Um, I had the, um, I would say fortunate, but also, um, Fortunate now because it worked out, but it was a pretty stressful experience at the time of, um, of having a, a building be built uh, for my laboratory from the ground up. The announcement that Zucro Labs was going to undergo a, a tremendous expansion um, to, to house our, our growing faculty and growing research in the area of propulsion, that was actually made the day before I interviewed to become a faculty member here. And so um, I viewed that as a $10 million plus up to my startup package and was very excited to participate in the design of that building and, um, and, and see it come to fruition. Of course, the challenge is, you know, on the first day of, uh, of being a faculty member, you, you, this is your lab. It's a, it's a hole in the ground. So we literally um, got to see it be built. Um, through time, of course, things started looking a little bit more optimistic as, as walls were constructed. Um, our laser lab didn't start with the great HVAC controls that we were promised, but eventually it got a roof and things like that, and we became more suitable for what we were trying to do. And so about 18 months um, towards my penultimate year, um, that's my, my nervous face smiling that, okay, I got the, I, we're, we have a lab now, um, we have to build the rest of this and make things happen. Um, and so my, my group here and I, we started with effectively bare concrete floors and toolboxes and, and got to work. Um, and now, now it's all, you know, sunsets and, and beautiful, but, uh, but it was a long road in between then. So I've just got a few minutes. Um, I'll, I'll try to be quick through some of the, I guess, a, a broad coverage of some of the problems that we work on. One of the big things that, um, that I actually started working on uh, when I first um, became a faculty member, actually even as a graduate student here, was um, looking at gas turbine combustion. Um, we, we built this experiment. Um, and, and it was able to actually replicate the flow conditions for the, for the sponsor we were looking at uh, to be able to study their, their burner and, and see what happens inside and try to diagnose some problems they were having with fuel air mixing and, and help them achieve higher efficiencies. And so we run a combustor like this. This is exactly what hangs on the, on the wing of your aircraft engine. That injector um, was directly extracted from, uh, from an engine and then given to us to, to run. Uh, we ignite it with a laser. That's what the spark is. You're seeing here a relatively low speed video um, in, in reality, when we actually uh, run much more expensive cameras at much higher repetition rates, we can see that um, when we, if we really zoom in on what's happening, this is a very complex flame. Uh, it has large and small scale structures interacting um, across a wide range of scales in space and time. And this is fundamentally what, what controls things like the rate of pollutant emissions from the flame and so forth. And so. As we try to understand these things better, um, the laser diagnostics which we perform give us the critical insight needed to, um, to, to effectively understand what's, what's happening in these complex flows and then understand how to better optimize them. A major issue in the development of propulsion systems is um, thermoacoustic instabilities. We can look at these 
different modes of instability, longitudinal as well as um, transverse and other sorts of modes. This is the same flame under two different operating conditions. It has totally different uh, modes of instability. These are things which we study and, and try to, to model mathematically so that we can um, uh, have better tools for a design process to avoid these sorts of issues. Sort of on, on one side of our work, we're, we're trying to uh, reduce the amplitude of instabilities in flames. Um, the other, I guess, um, way to, to handle this is just to embrace the instability and amplify it as much as you possibly can. That's effectively the basis of this new technology um, called rotating detonation engines for pressure gain combustion. Um, this is a, a, an area of um, a very active interest right now. RDEs were, were theorized many years ago um, to, to, to offer potential uh, benefits from a thermodynamic perspective and from a power density perspective. Um, but uh, it, it took the Russians actually firing one in the early 2000s for the U.S. to really start funding these things heavily. So that's, that's a, I guess, a nugget of wisdom for other folks that are looking at, a, at an area to go into for research. Um, so we're really working on that a lot. We're also working for high-speed propulsion um, applications, looking at solid fuel ramjets. Um, here I, I'm running out of time, so I'll just kind of leave it to say that this is a this is a very active area of interest for us right now, and working with with O and R as well as um, um, you know other DoD agencies to better understand um, what the, how, how to make these devices perform better. I wanted to take the time to also just point out um, at least. Uh, from, a, from a teaching standpoint, um, one of my, my favorite classes to teach, it's uh, Aero 535 Propulsion Design Build Test. We have a lot of fun in this class, and it's an experiential learning opportunity for, uh, for graduate students and also uh, high-achieving undergraduates to, uh, in one semester, design, build, and test a combustion device at Zucro Laboratories. Um, and so here are a couple of examples where we've actually built a, a, a rotating detonation engine fueled by a solid and as Bill uh, alluded to before, we even take on some, um, just some, uh, some for fun projects like this 100 foot tall flamethrower for Burning Man, um, shown here on the literal fire truck that uh, that it was uh, that we used for at Burning Man. So, looking forward, um, we'll be continuing to work in this uh, sort of framework from the laboratory to the engine, and um, and also you know working through graduate student mentoring and development and hands on learning opportunities for education. Finally, I just have one more thing to say, and then I'll stop, I promise, um, is that, you know, Zucro Labs is a, is a very special place. We all um, certainly uh, emphasize the fact that we have tremendous uh, resources and, and capabilities there to, to do awesome um, uh, propulsion research. But actually, what would make Zucro Labs work is, is the people. Uh, if we had all these, these labs and so forth, but without people like, like Scott Meyer and the other folks I've listed up here, we, we wouldn't be able to um, to, to really be the, have, have the success that we have. And so I just wanted to you know, acknowledge very, very specifically that Scott Meyer has, has just had a tremendous influence on me and, um, and has probably, I've learned more about engineering from Scott than anybody else. Um, and so that I'm really thankful for that. It's, it's why I'm here. Um, Rohan Gedji is my right-hand man and obviously Steve Heaster and Bob Luck who just had a tremendous influence on me as well. So anyways, with that, I'll stop, I, I promise. And um, we'll, we'll quit from here. Thank you. Thanks, Carson. And, and, and congratulations again on the promotion. So I'm supposed to moderate a question, excuse me, question and answer a little bit. So if you have a question on your remote, you can certainly type it into the chat. But Carson, I'm a little bit hamstrung. So if somebody there has a question, please feel free to go ahead and call on somebody in the room and address a question directly that way. Sure. So uh, any work that, I think you mentioned uh, work with the Department of Energy and interest in ammonia? Yeah. So is that an area of exploration for you? Sure. Um, yeah, we were, we were fortunate to just have a big win, um, also with my, my co-PI, um, Bob Luck, uh, to look at uh, ammonia combustion uh, as a, um, Really, to solve some of the logistical issues for uh, for providing hydrogen at large scale to um, combustion devices for for energy applications, um, uh, hydrogen is a very um, is is a very popular fuel right now because, of course, you know as we as we try to go towards um, carbon reduction um, in our combustion emissions, um, hydrogen is is one way to do that. Problem is that hydrogen is very dis difficult to transport in large masses. 
and, um, and, and distribute through a large network. And so ammonia looks like an attractive way to, to do that. Um, yeah. There are other good reasons to do it. And of course, as you know, it, uh, it, it was the fuel used on the X-15. So it's actually a pretty good rocket fuel as well. So, um, so now that we're getting over the hump of, of working with, with ammonia in our lab, we're excited about other potential opportunities that we can leverage there. I don't see any online, but let me ask you one. Can you, well, actually, can you mention really quickly about the high pulse? Because you were really instrumental in getting us to bring that device to Purdue. Yeah, high pulse is, um, I guess I'll just give a quick overview. High pulse is a, is a reflected shock tunnel, or it can also operate in a shock expansion tunnel mode. Uh, it's it's going to be a really great capability for us to, um, to, to look at both aerodynamics and, and propulsion um, uh, propulsion topics, I guess, um, under extreme Mach number conditions. Uh, the, the tunnel is, has been operated um, up to Mach 17 um, and, and can go much higher than that. Uh, we're excited to have that. that. That actually was the facility that was utilized in the development of the X-43, one of the most famous and, and productive hypersonic flight test experiments that, that we've run in this country. And um, so we're, we're, we're eager to bring that here and, and take advantage of it, particularly with, uh, with all the new diagnostics that we can bring to bear on this problem, um, which, which weren't available back in those days. All right, Carson, I think just to keep on time, I'm gonna to have to cut things off there. As, as we wrap up, you don't have to answer, but somebody asked if you get a hundred foot flames over to football game. So just to <laughs> think about that as we go forward. Hey, once again, yeah. congratulations, Carson, to you. And then to the other associate professors, I have to leave, but congratulations to, to, to all of you. It's great to have you as colleagues here at Purdue. So thank you, Carson. Yeah, thanks so much, Bill.